Alan Praben Hansen, he's president of Hymatech Incorporated. A Praben, the heart and soul of manufacturing in America are job shops. Five, 10, 20 person yep. operations, the same thing. And we know that there's a lot of emphasis always on equipment, on machinery. Everyone loves a, a new modern five axis mill. They're displayed extensively, or they're talked about. It's all about you know feeds and speeds. Mm -hmm. Do those job shops that want to improve productivity, do they think enough about the tool holding, work holding part of the equation? From my side of it, Jim, being an accessory guy, no. It's To me, it's like, it's always an afterthought. Like, oh, by the way, I've got this nice machine. Yeah, I need some tools to make it work. So I think a lot more forethought needs to be given to the accessories that are gonna go on there. Earlier on in the process, when they start looking at machines, they should start thinking about what's going on, what they can use, what it's gonna cost, bring it into the whole equation. How early should they think of that? Should they think about, here's my part now, do I work my way back from the, from the cutting tool? Do I work my way down from the machine? Ultimately, I think if they have a part they're going to produce, they should start looking at it right from the beginning. What's it going to take to make that part? Yeah, it's, you can find a good machine and it's easy to do, but the rest of the equation is important too. So they need to think about it right in the beginning. How should they think about cycle time? Because cycle time, and one way to think of, of course, is from, from the start of the cut to the end of the cut. But actual cycle time really is the start of making one part, the start of making the next part. Right. So, so is, is tooling, how much of a factor is that becoming in, in decreasing that cycle time? Well, I would say it's bigger and bigger. Cycle time is so critical. We're looking at world competition now for everything. So they have to figure their chip-to-chip -chip time, what it's going to cost, how long it's going to take to change cutting tools, change live tools or angle heads before they're back making chips again. So it's really critical to go chip-to-chip part to part time. Yeah, and the on the tooling side that, that you're involved in, is it, are you seeing more work retrofitting existing equipment or are you outfitting brand new machines from, from the get-go? Ours is a little bit of both, but there's majority new machines these mm -hmm. days. There's a lot of equipment being purchased and for high-end, sophisticated work. We do that well in this country, so, um, you know, and that's where we fill. That's our niche is, uh, is the high-end equipment, and that's our core business. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've identified a sort of sweet spot for those shops that are about a quarter of a million dollars or so for, which is about the entry level price that you can get full five axes now at this point. So is in the old days, of course, we'd use, we'd find a way to work around four plus one, three plus two, a right angle drive, and if I tilt tables, something like that. Is that gonna disappear, do you think, that accessorizing? I don't think so. I thought that a long time ago about rotary tables, and they're as popular as ever. The lathes that we sell um, live tools for, they have 11, 12 axes of movement on them. So, you know, you got to figure out how to have tools that can handle all that uh, movement and uh, have that capability covered with tooling. So I think it's as important as ever. Accuracy, repeatability. Uh, we're working at tenths now, working at levels that were un unheard of when I, I, I began this industry. Does that put a challenge on the tool holding side of it? Um, it does, so we have to supply tools that, you know, we know when the customer puts it in the machine, their runouts is a tenth, something in that neighborhood. They'd like it to be less. So, you know, there's small tools, there's fast tools, they need to run accurate. So, you know, for us, the, the, it is a challenge to, to make a tool that maintains those kind of accuracies. But we're up to that challenge. Now, we used to talk about Swiss jobs. I mean, sort of the, if you're a machine for the medical industry, super precise. Uh, aerospace, same thing. Automotive, maybe less so. But the trend I'm seeing is that all of them really want tight tolerances. You know, they want extreme levels of repeatability at this point. Do you see a difference, automotive, aerospace? Uh, no, I think you're right about that. In, in addition to the tolerances they want to hold, they're looking for productivity um, and performance of the cutting tools and the better they're held, the more accurately they run, the longer they last. So, you know, some of it is from a, a cost standpoint, and it's really critical that things run accurately. Now, Prib, I understand that right now you're president of Hymatech Incorporated, but you're about to change titles. Tell me about it. That's right. It's uh, pretty exciting news for us. In fact, uh, as of October 1st, Platinum Tooling Technologies is going to be the exclusive importer for Hymatech for North America. Uh, in addition, we're going to be importing Technocrafts, um, AMF, and Henninger out of Germany too. So everything's going to fall under the Platinum Tooling umbrella and allow us to be a bigger, stronger company. So yeah, it's pretty exciting.